court heave at the horn. It's good! Trey Young is the maestro. Are you kidding me? Trey has it at midcourt. He fires and it. He hit it. Trey Young. Oh, yes. The man you're about to see can do all that. We are now thrilled to welcome in Hawks All-Star Trey Young to the jump. It is so nice to finally see you again. Welcome. Yep. Nice to see you too, Rachel. It's been a long time. <laughs> I know, man. And we're just two weeks away, finally, from the start of the new season. How anxious are you to play a real game with, in your case, with your team, the first time in more than nine months? Yeah, it's, it's been a long time. Uh, I'm super anxious to get back and playing. Uh, we got a lot of a really, really good guys coming. Uh, a lot of new guys that we've added to our team. So being able to play with a lot of these new guys, but also um, with, with the guys we've had. So it's, it's going to be exciting, and I'm excited to play. And, and you said new guys. Your front office put in work this offseason. Bogdan Bogdanovich, Rajon Rondo, Danilo Gallinari. These were some really coveted free agents. What was your reaction when you found out all these guys were coming to Atlanta? Yeah, I was, I was super excited. I was super excited. We've added a bunch of guys that bring a lot of different uh, unique talents to our team and uh, a lot of different pieces that are going to really uh, help us take that next next jump to the next level this year. So I'm really excited. So what is that next jump to the next level for you? What are your expectations for the team and yourself this season? I mean, for me, it's, it's all about winning. I mean, whatever it is, it's it's winning, getting to the playoffs. Um, but it's not just getting there. It's it's making noise once we get there. So uh, it's 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 all about that for me and this team this year. And uh, we're excited to go out there and do it. And look, it's going to be a different season than anyone in the NBA has ever had, going to play games largely without fans, travel restrictions. And the NBA has asked you guys to make changes in your own personal life off the court, at home. Can't go to bars, can't go to restaurants. You're 22 years old. What is it like to be told that when you're 22? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's different, but uh, it's, it's, the, it's our job. This is our job. We choose to do this. And um, I know every NBA player would, would rather give up all the other stuff uh, to be able to play play this game we get to do. Um, so uh, we'll be able to give up, give it up for a little bit. Well, that attitude is going to keep you and your teammates safe. I know they appreciate that. I did want to ask you, because this is very exciting for us here at The Jump, we would like to formally announce, Trey Young, that one of your childhood dreams is coming true. Adidas is releasing your first signature shoe in the fall of 2021. What is your reaction to that? Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm super excited. Uh, this is a, a dream come true for me. A uh, dream as a kid, um, being playing on those little goals in your, your room, um, just putting on those shoes, just dreaming of being of that, that, uh, that player. And um, for me to be able to have a, a partnership with Adidas and, and take that next step, and we're going into the Trey Young ones, um, in 2021, now kids will be able to, to wear my shoes, so I'm excited. How involved do you hope to be in the process of crafting the shoe? Uh, for me, I'm, I'm very involved. I want, I want this shoe to represent me. I want this shoe to represent who I am. Um, the shoe is going to do that, and uh, every kid that, that puts the shoe on, or every person who plays in the shoe uh, is going to feel the way I feel. So uh, I'm very involved in this shoe. I don't know. You want to be careful. I don't know if everyone who could, puts on the shoe is going to be able to shoot like you. You have to be careful not to make that promise. <laughs> <laughs> that is maybe, maybe. <laughs> well, it's very I, I don't really think people sometimes realize that a lot of guys have shoe sponsorships, but a signature shoe is still pretty rare in this league. So, Trey, congratulations. This is a huge accomplishment at 22 years old. Really very cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can't <gasps> wait for everybody to put it on. We will, we will be wet, ready to welcome you back when you've got one to actually show us. Until then, good luck with everything in the preseason and training camp. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. All right, but when there's smoke, right, a smoke screen, there's usually a fire, and it seems like the Rockets are on fire, not the best way. Um, the way I see this really is just that you can't hide from the facts. 
you know, you do have someone that wants to be there in John Wall, who after injury is going to be on a mission to prove himself, especially with this contract. But overall, the Rockets, they've been moving the last few years with a walking bucket, James Harden, but they haven't been operating with the identity that they needed to find success that will keep him there, which is why he's looking elsewhere. To be fair, Rachel, that longer conversation in that interview, he says a lot of the right things about how James is com wants to win a championship and how Tillman hopes that it's going to be in Houston where they think they have a chance to do that. And that's all the good kind of cleanup talk you do. That's what you say in public. Behind closed doors, obviously, is a different story. But to say that this team got better, I mean, either you're delusional or you're just really bad at lying. Either way, that doesn't help. You don't need to go that far. He could have stopped at just, hey, we want to win a championship. James wants to win a championship. We'll get it done. But to say that out loud just indicates a, a, a complete unnecessary understanding of what's, what's happening. When you think about trading Russell Westbrook, an all-NBA player, who you gave up eight billion first round picks to get <laughs> a year later for a guy who hasn't played in two years and you got one first round pick for that in compensation. There's no way you could tell me that's an upgrade. Even if John Wall is a John Wall that we remember from two years ago, he's still not as good as Russell Westbrook is right now. Janae, we haven't had you on since the trade, Wall and Westbrook. As a Houston native, how do you feel? Honestly, I'm emotionally numb. I'm rooting for John Wall. He, um, you know, as someone who has come back from injuries myself, right. I think a lot of times you have this mission to prove that you are just as good, if not better, than you were before. And I think he will have that motivation. And really, you know, given what he's give, gone through recently, uh, a fresh start is good for him. But overall, for the organization, it, a lot of the moves, I feel like we're trying to just attach ourselves to value, not necessarily a mission or an identity. Because like mm. for the last few years, we've been centered upon analytics and shooting more threes and going in isolation. But as a team sport where teams win through collaboration, that's sort of where we've let the numbers do the talking instead of the players. And I think that's all James has said. Like, I want a voice in how this thing moves forward. So it is frustrating, frustrating to witness, but I do think John Wall still provides value in the NBA. We'll see how far he defies expectation. And we'll see how long it takes him, right? We saw with Paul George, Gordon Hayward, guys who miss a significant amount of time, even if they can stay healthy through the next season when they come back, they're not quite always themselves right away. But John's had more time off than most. We'll have to see how that affects him. I want to get to the other side of the whole Rockets-Nets equation because Kevin Durant spoke to the media today, and he was, of course, asked about James Harden. Take a look at this. We all know all these James Harden rumors are out there. Uh, have And he's been your teammate in the past. Uh, what do you think about him and what he might bring if they were to trade for him? Uh, I don't think about James Harden at all. I mean, um, he doesn't play on our team. I mean, I don't think about him. I don't, I don't I don't think about him. I mean, I just don't. Where's the best landing spot, Harden, then, long term? Do you think it is Brooklyn? Do you think it's Philadelphia? Or do you think it's best for him to stay in Houston? Rachel, uh, if I could, I want to go off the board, and I'm going to say da -da -da -da, Golden State is the best landing spot for him. Hear me out, right? One of the things that Houston wants in return is high-value assets. We know in the conversations with Brooklyn, while we love Karras, the Vernon Spencer, Dinwiddie's a solid player, Jared Allen's a nice big, those aren't high-value players the way that Houston wants in return. Golden State is one of the few locations in the league that can offer high-value assets and still give James Harden a realistic chance of winning a championship. Obviously, without Klay Thompson, that, that task is a little harder, but I think he fits in with what they would be building towards the future, and it would cost them, obviously, that Minnesota pick next year, very lightly protected. It would probably cost them James Wiseman, who, of course, they love and fits a, a need for them right now, but the ability to say Curry, Harden, Klay, Draymond as your top four, ooh, that's, that's pretty hard to say no to if you're Golden State. Look, I mean, I'm actually not mad at that, okay? I'm going to probably stick with something that was on the board, but when you talk about <laughs> Golden State, I think people don't give Steph Curry uh, too much uh, accolades in this regard in the sense that he's probably one of the most low-maintenance superstars. He had no problem taking more so a media backseat to Kevin Durant and letting him shine, knowing that he is unguardable at seven feet and one of the best offensive players in the game. So I'm not mad at you, I mean. I will say, though, when it comes to James Harden, I think it's it's been clear that the Rockets, there are many attempts to find a partner in crime for James Harden. Like that time has expired. 
fired, unfortunately. And plus, with fairly new ownership, a new GM, he needs a partner in crime. And I think now that the Nets are like a no-go or I forgot who it was. Like, I don't know that woman. Was it J-Lo? Right, so right. I think stuff like Mariah Carey once said that to J-Lo. Right, that's the vibes that I get watching that. It was Mariah Carey. Um, you know, seeing big picture here, I think the 76ers could be really interesting considering his former GM is there and Daryl Morey. Plus, you know, that gives him a good chance to win, contend. And I do like the idea of James Harden and Joel Embiid together because Joel Embiid will give you, what, 23 and 12 in the paint. And James can give you 30 from the perimeter. Now, I know there will have to be a sweetener. I don't know if you can keep all the players in Philly, but I do see that working in Philly. James and Joel tag teaming. Even though Golden State, that was off the board. I'm not mad at it. I, I am looking at the 76ers and also Meek Mill's Instagram since we're already talking music.